If you would like to find out how your second or third mortgage can be removed for a fraction of its price, call 510-742-5887. Due to the uncertain economy, many people have settled their debts for a fraction of its value. It's recommended to use an experienced lawyer to deal with it. Shaw Parali is an experienced debt settlement attorney and has handled hundreds of such cases successfully. There are no upfront fees for debt settlement. Only when you win, you pay. Call Shaw Parali, attorney at law, at 510-742-5887 or visit YourDebtSettlementAttorney.com for a free assessment. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is established by this ad. The law does not guarantee success. Call 510-742-5887. The new Attorney On Air app is now available to download on your iPhone or Android. Get access to the latest information and interact on the immigration and debt settlement blocks. That's not all. The app has plenty of entertainment as well. Listen live to the Shaw Pirelli Law Radio Shows. Go to www.attorneyonair.com to download it for free. Yes, that's right, for free at www.attorneyonair.com. Is your credit card debt driving you insane? Don't panic and claim bankruptcy. Don't consolidate and end up worse off than before. What you need to do is call the debt settlement team at the Shop Crowley Law Group PC. They have an excellent record of getting your debt reduced at a fraction of what you owe. The best part is you don't pay a penny until a settlement is reached. Stop wasting time and money and call the Shop Crowley Law Group PC at 510-742-5887. That's 510-742-5887. Get out of debt now. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad. The law firm does not guarantee success. And now, from the San Francisco Bay Area Studios, KLOK proudly presents to you the prominent attorney, Shaw Pirelli, for the Shaw Pirelli Law Show, coming at you with over 50,000 watts of power. The Shaw Pirelli Law Show. Where all your views matter. Hello, 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 everybody. Assalamualaikum, Sastika. Namaskar to all the listeners. This is Attorney Shapur Ali for the Shapur Ali Law Show. And today on the board, I have with me Franco. Franco, thank you so much to be helping us today. And uh, and ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of things going on in immigration as usual. We will be opening the line really fast. In two minutes, you can call. The number to the studio is going to be 489125565, 489125565. And anything I'm going to tell you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. And again, the number to our office is 510-742-5887. Ladies and gentlemen, few things happened uh, probably last week, and uh, one of them, of course, is the visa bulletin, which is not giving a lot of um, of uh, good things uh, really for India, but God gave a lot of good things for people from all the other parts of the world, even an EB3, and um, I have posted that, and I have also posted some kind of predictions on the YouTube channel, so please check it. It's on YouTube. Uh, dot com slash shop rally law and you will be able to to see my predictions there hopefully i might be right this time but <laughs> it happens sometimes i get it wrong so ladies and gentlemen another thing that happened of course is the the justice Scalia, who is uh one of the pro well I, I should say one of the hard uh, members on the justice uh u.s supreme court actually died and may god uh help his soul and um, the truth is um, also that uh, Justice Scalia was a very, very uh, hard judge, especially when it comes to immigration. So a lot of times he's, he's always disagreeing, of course, with the, all the, the, the Obama, uh, or whatever President Obama has passed. And also whenever it comes to immigration, he was very, very anti-immigration somehow. He was fair when it comes to cases, but he was very, on policy issues, he was very much a, uh, what we call a right-wing conservative. So now that he's a, he passed away, we, uh, we don't know who is going to come next, but we're hoping since it's President Obama that he's here, and constitutionally he has a full right, even though there's a big 
blah, blah, blah on the, on the news everywhere. He has a full right to nominate someone. And of course, the Senate will probably block him, but, but the truth is he has the right to do that. And we hope uh, we will get something, um, we will get uh, something, someone good right there who's going to balance the power in a fair way. Because the thing that people don't realize, a president lasts usually for eight years maximum. And uh, what happens when it comes to a justice on the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court, that person lost for a lifetime. And the problem is that if, that, if they are right now, there were nine judges. So what happened, five of them were conservatives and four of them were liberals. And whenever there were votes, it tend to swing on the conservative side because they were more conservative than liberals. So now with Justice Scalia gone, now things are kind of even. So if, depending who's going to be there, where the, this is going to side, this is going to make a big difference, not only for immigrants, but for the whole country and ultimately the entire world. So it is very important that we push those who are citizens to vote and, and, and encourage, uh, call the Senate and tell them they need to, to allow President Obama to nominate someone. It's very important I mention that today because many of the immigration cases you will see come from the U.S. Supreme Court, and the decisions are really relying on those judges. So make sure that you do that. So I think I know we have some callers. Let me take one caller right now. This is Shabra. You're live on air. Hi, Mr. Shah. Uh, first Hi. of all, thanks a lot for doing the show. It's uh, really informative. For, uh, people. Oh, thank you so much for your kind words. Yeah. So, uh, I have a question uh, about uh, H-1B uh, transfer to uh, another company. Uh, basically, I have an I-140 approved, and my current uh, uh, petition is expiring uh, July. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can I apply uh, uh, along with the uh, extension uh, for both myself and my wife, uh, who is on H4? Uh, she also has an EAD from my current company. So, uh, I was just so you have an I-140 on uh, uh, with company A, and which year are you? And you're in the sixth year. Uh, yeah, I, I have another one and a half year or two on my six year cap. So. Okay. So, yeah, you can file for the transfer of the H-1B and ask for the extension at the same time. Usually they will grant the extension inside the transfer itself. And make sure that the lawyer mentioned that in the LCA, okay. and according to the LCA. And hopefully okay. you'll get it three years. And, okay. um, and then also for your wife, you need to transfer the H-4 so that she right. can maintain the EAD. But uh, there's one caveat here. If if your company cancels the I-140 before you move, then you will probably not get uh, such a long extension. You will probably get only one and a half year. And also for your wife, make sure that it doesn't kind of invalidate the EAD if the I-140 is dead. If the I-140 is alive, you're safe. So the best way to do that is to file it, get it approved, then you move. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ready. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Good luck to you. And if you need help on transfer, etc., just give us a call five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. So, ladies and gentlemen, I know um, I'm talking about this uh, situation with uh, with Judge Scalia, um, Anthony Scalia, who passed away last week, and how this is going to really kind of change the dynamic um, in the in the United States because many people don't realize it. Uh, the, the the Supreme Court of the, uh, law of the land is a uh, is kind of it's not really the Constitution, although the Constitution is it is, but the truth is that the U.S. Supreme Court is the one who who really kind of interpret this Constitution. So, if if there is a change and change in the balance of power, things are going to change. Hopefully, change for the better, because um, like I said, Antonio Scalia, who was a judge before, was very very strict. Uh, he was a right-wing conservative, uh, n known to be a nice gentleman, but also known to be really harsh on when it comes to immigration and many of the policies of the President Obama. So let, now we, have, we, we hope that things are going to change a little bit. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to call, the lines are open. The number to the studio is 408-912-5565, 408-912-5565. And today is February 18th. And we are basically uh, producing this show live today, so you can call. I know right now, recently, I've been putting a lot of shows recorded, but the truth is, um, uh, is, um, is I have I'm very busy, as you know. We are in the H1B season; things are moving a little bit um, uh, kind of fast for us, and it's it's kind of hard for me to kind of uh, do all the shows live. But I'm trying my best to do at least one show, two shows live a, a week, so that I can advise people on the, on the issues that uh, we are talking about. 
And now the other things that we are we're talking about uh, is let me take another caller, then we will we will continue. This is Shaparali. You are live in here. Uh, hey, Shaparali. This is uh, Rajesh. Uh, I have a Hi, quick Rajesh. question on I140. Yes, sir. Uh, so I actually recently got I140 approved. And uh, uh, so what is the clause for uh, H1, um, no, sorry, uh, what is that, EAD, H4 EAD for my wife to work? Is, is it, Does it have to be completed for my six years completion because I'm still on fourth year of my H1? No. The rule on the H4 EAD, if you, this is a good question, and I have a very good uh, explanation of this on this blog. It's called www.h42ead, h4toead.com. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's either or. If you have an I-140 approved, she can use that. If she, you don't have an I-140 approved and you have reached six years and you have filed an extension based on, on a pending labor, for example, 365 days pending labor, you can mm-hmm. use that to get her EAD. So she's fine. You can apply for it. And if you need help, give me a call. We'll be glad to, to handle it of for course. you. Of course. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much, Shasha. Good luck uh, to Really you. helpful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And you should check this website, www.h42ead.com. Actually, you have to put the www. I don't know why, but we have to put that. So go ahead and check it. It's a blog where I cover a lot of topics uh, on EADs and H4. Let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You're live in here. Hello? Hello. I think I lost the caller. Let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You're live in here. Hello? Hello. Yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm on the L1. I'm working for company A. Hello? Yeah, I cannot hear you properly. Can you speak a little bit louder? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm working for company A on my L1 visa, L1B. Yeah. Uh, last year I applied uh, for H1B through a different company. Uh, uh, for some reason, um, since my boss is working uh, on L2 uh, EAD, uh, so I don't want to, you know, change the status from L1 to H1 right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the company is uh, applying for H1 this year. So, also my company, also my current company is applying for a new H1. So, will that be a problem having an uh, approved H1 petition and applying for a new H1? That's a data problem? No, it's not a problem if it is done properly. What should be done if you don't want to move on the from the L1 on the status side, what you do, you do an H1B petition with consular processing. That means on October 1st, unless you leave the country and come back on H1, the H1 will not kick in, but you still make it to the quota. So tell your lawyer to apply under a consular processing. Um, then you can revive it any time. Uh, the other option, even he does he does it by change of status you can always take your l1 if you have a stamp on your passport leave the country come back and then your wife does the same on her l2 then you will be back on l1 and l2 but um basically in this case you have to have what we call um uh, either do a council of processing which will not have the h1 kick in automatically or if they do that to change your status then you have to leave and come back on l1 but then, then you you kind of make it already to the quota. Your cap exam after that. Okay. My company is applying for uh, applying. Uh, I cannot hear you. Your voice is too low. No, no. Hello? My company is doing consular processing only. Okay, so then then you should be uh, fine. Having a approved H1 and applying a new H1 does it create a problem? I am confused. What is the question? If you already have an H1 already approved, that means your cap exam. So why would you apply for a new one? Okay, I don't so let me that. take another caller because I cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Give me a call at the office. We can look at the case because I can't hear you here. 510-742-5887. Franco, I don't know if there are... I think there are more callers. Let me take another caller. This is Shah Parai. You are live in here. Hi, Shah. This is Raj. I have a quick question on uh, H1, H1B transfer and H4 EAD. Yes, sir. So, I was on L1 and my wife was on L2. And recently, October 1st, we moved to H1. And uh, she got H4 EAD. Uh, yeah. And she is working now. I'm moving to a different company B, and they are transferring my H1. Uh, so we do not have any H1 stamp on my passport or H4 stamp on my wife's passport. So while doing the transfer, uh, what are the things I need to make sure that uh, so that uh, she doesn't lose her H4 EAD? Yeah, the important. This is a very good question. One thing: do you have to transfer also her H4? 
when you're transferring your H1 and make sure that I-140 is alive by the time her H4 transfer is approved too. Because whenever you do an H1B transfer, you have to also do an I-539 for the H4. And if the I-140 is still alive, she maintains that EAD, she can just continue working. But uh, my lawyer was saying like I-539 I- is for extension and uh, since she has a valid visa for next three years, uh, she doesn't need to do any uh, anything. Is it true? Not really. Because the thing is just like whatever she has on her passport, whenever you're transferring the H-1B, it is protocol to do that. Even though they don't apply it strictly, but there was a case law back I think in 2006 where they say if you don't transfer that H-4, technically she becomes out of status. Because whenever you're changing that H-1, usually they change the I-94 number, right? So when that I-94 number which attaches to the H-4 is changed, she has a problem. The other option in her case, you don't need to do a change of status. You just, uh, if she has a stamp of H4 on her passport, she can just leave the country and come back and her H4 will kick in on the new company once your H1 is approved. But um, I personally always do it and I know some lawyers got in trouble for not doing it. And uh, because the H4 EAD is very tricky and it has not really set up rules, I'm following the rules of AC21, which means basically it has to be transferred. So uh, technically you have to do an I-539 unless she wants to leave and come back and it will kick in a new I-94. Okay, okay? so you're saying that uh, there should be a concurrent filing uh, along with my H-1B transfer. There should be a I-1, I-539 for H-4 and that should be a concurrent filing. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sean. It's you're really welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Rai, you're live here. Yeah, hi, Sheikh Ali. My name is Govind, um, and thanks for this show. Actually, reviewing like you know good information. So, oh, thank uh, you so much. Sir. Yeah, can I ask you one question regarding the PIO card to uh, OCI card for uh, kids? I don't know much about OCI because uh, this is Indian law, and I'm licensed in Calif in United States, so I can kind of give you basic and hopefully just ask your questions. Sometimes you will have callers who are going to call and answer, but. I personally don't, even if I know I'm not allowed to give the answer technically because okay. of the fact I'm not licensed in India. But ask me the question. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Actually, uh, my daughter, like, you know, I got PIO card around 2011. And mm-hmm. uh, this law PIO card to OSA card conversion it came on 2015. And many people are saying that uh, if it is applied before 2015 January, no need to convert it. That PIO card is valid for 15 years till 2026. So, do I need to convert or no need to convert? I don't know. <laughs> this okay. is one of the answers. I have no idea, unfortunately. You know, like I said, this one, um, uh, I don't know it at all because this is not really my area. So, what I will advise you to do, give a call to the U.S. consulate personally or go there. Uh, I mean, okay. Indian consulate in San Francisco. They are the best to answer. You don't rely on what people say. Or go on their website. They have a good inf- good information there. But personally, I don't know. But if you know, next time maybe you can tell me on the radio. I don't know the answer. Sure. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Good luck to you. Sorry for that. Okay. Okay. So let me take let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You are live in here. Hi. Uh, thanks for running the show. It's it's indeed helpful. Uh, oh, thank you so much for your kind words, sir. I appreciate that. So, uh, thanks for taking my call as well. So, I have a question on my H-1B transfer. Let me give you a little bit background on my case a little quickly, and then I have sure. a question on that. So, I I was working with Company A and laid off in December, and then Company uh, B is a consulting firm through which I did the H-1B transfer. So, and they I, I joined them on the receipt number. Now, I'm working for them, but then the they have filed on a premium processing, but they got RFE. Now, I, another company C is also, I mean, I'm, I'm, go, I'm going hard with them and they said that since you have RFE, we have to go back to A and transfer it. So it's a long gap. We do the consular processing. So they are doing consular processing. Now, the timing is like C is already, C has already applied for consular processing. So maybe two weeks from now, I will have a status on that. And company B is also working on responding to the RFE and it is a change of status. So like, uh, next week they might respond so another two weeks they will also have update but eventually i want to go to company c so what is the options i have i have to go back to india and come back with stamping for to join did, did, did company c get approved 
Uh, not yet. They just uh, filed the H-1B. Yeah, if the company C gets approved before company B gets approved, th then um, then you can decide to go or not to go. The other options is to go ahead and wait for company B to get approved, then amend the, the petition on company... Once it gets approved on company C, amend it from a change of status. The shortest way is, of course, to leave and come back. And once company C gets approved, it will clear everything. Just go and get a stamp. Do you have a stamp on your passport? I, I don't have. I mean, the visa is expired. Okay. okay, then you have to go for stamping. Um, then uh, the, the 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 risk of going out is, of course, you know, they can deny you at the at the at the U.S. embassy. So if you get it with company B. It's better that company B go ahead and uh, you work for company B, you're already working for B. Then from right. B, you can move that status to C, but they have to amend their H-1B petition. Otherwise, okay, if, if B is still pending, you're going to be stuck. You'll have to do consular processing. There's no other choice. I see. Okay? And, and follow-up quick question is, if if B goes in a negative way, like if, if, I, if it doesn't approve, then uh, is there any negative uh, implications on, on fees? No, you won't have negative implications except you will have no choice. You'll have to go counselor processing because you already moved to B. That's why I'm telling people right now, don't move until you have your transfer approved. Because yes. had you yes. been with company A already, you would have been easier to move from A to C also. So oh. now it's too late. You already moved to B. So what you need to do, you need to just hopefully... Company C gets approved, you do counselor processing, or B gets approved, then they amend company C and move from B to C. So it's a okay. little bit tricky, and uh, if, you're, if there's any denial, give me a call at the office. I'll guide you what to do next, okay? Absolutely. Right? Sure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good luck to you. Number to our office, 510-742-5887, and the website to check, attorneyonair.com. Let me take another caller. This is Shah Parai. You are live in here. Hi, Shah. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for the show, Shah. I mean, I really appreciate your all your inputs, and it's really helping for the vision uh, listeners. Um, I have a quick. Um, I someone is asking about uh, the uh, PIO card to OSA conversion. I thought of giving some input on that. I can oh, please, um, do, uh, please since do. Thank I, you. I have converted my son PIO card to OSA card. Uh, if you allow me, I'll just quickly give one minute. What is the process and? Um, and also, there is no um, proper guidance from the government uh, website as well. They say you don't need a conversion for 20, before 2015 if you have PIO card. But that's absolutely false, and we have to update, get uh, convert our uh, PIO card to OCA card. Oh, cool. good, good, good. So you are confirming that, and you did that for your son, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I did that for my son, actually, in um, uh, 2015. There was, um, um, see, first thing is, if we don't need uh, PIO hope that to convert to OCA card before 2015, there is no uh, value of, con why, why do they introduce conversion of PIO to OCI? Yeah, right? exactly. That's, so, that's, there is that's no, no logical, yeah, right? So, there, there is no proper guidance from them. I know uh, 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 everyone is having same problems. What I did was, um, I reached out to an uh, Indian consulate, I got talked to them. They said, uh, you can, if you have a PIO card, you can convert to OCA card without any penalty, without any fees. You, you don't charge anything. Usually they charge $285 or something. They don't charge anything. But you still have to convert your PIO card to OCA card, which is one time when you don't need um, the, the, the 15 years validity and all this will not come to your um, uh, no, the kids who are born here in this country. Okay, that's a very good one. Thank you so much. You know, you just helped me. You just saved me right now because I didn't know the answer. <laughs> but thank you so much. So you got your answer here earlier. Uh, the caller who was calling about the OCI and converting it, and they are saying before 2015, but now it seems like it is better for you just to convert it and go and file it. So, And they are, you're saying that they're not charging, right, for that? Yeah, they're not charging, but we still use our documentation. All the documentation has to be provided. In 2015, they used to collect original PIO card uh, in case if you have to travel to emergency to India. Again, you have to go for apply for a temporary visa or something. But now, from 2016, they have changed the policies as well. You don't need to sub submit your PIO card. You can keep your original PIO card. You can apply for OCA conversion. Once the OCA conversion is comes up, you can hand over this PIO card to a government. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. And what's your name, sir? 
my name is mahesh uh, shah i call you call yeah. i almost call every week to you know listen and talk to you about few questions oh, that thank you so much mahesh that, i really appreciate your feedback what you just gave us is very valuable for everybody so so ladies and gentlemen unfortunately i'm not licensed in india so i cannot even give that advice but you got you got um you got some very good uh, good points from mahesh and he has gone through that so hopefully that will help so thank you mahesh so let me take another caller ladies and gentlemen uh, this is shabrai you're live on air hi uh, mr shabrai this is shailesh and hi, shailesh. i have a very quick question about uh, visa stamping outside the home country yes sir So actually I have an H1B uh for almost like 60 years and I my I went for the approved for last 5 years in EB2. Um so I have a travel plan to Canada and uh, unfortunately my visa stamp is expired. So uh I'm kind of wondering is it possible for me to go to Canada itself and do the stamping there instead of going to my home country India? Yes, you can. because uh, you already had one first stamp was already obtained from uh, already on your so so the second stamp usually they will allow you to do in Canada uh just to give you general rule for everybody whenever you filing an H1B if it is your original stamp the first stamp on your passport it has to be obtained from the from your home country that means india for most people there are three exceptions to that one of course if you already have a stamp of H1B before then you don't need to go to India but two if you uh, you went to a school in United States you graduated here from a masters and accredited school or three you graduated from a school from Canada so in your case yes you will be able to get the stamp there okay all right and same rules apply for H4 or because my wife is also an H1 yes, so probably yes. we all can get travel together no but there okay? there did she get an a stamp before She already had. Yeah, we have we have a couple of stamps okay, already from India. Then you should be fine. Don't worry. Go there and enjoy your trip to Canada. Okay. All, All right. right. Thanks a lot. Really okay. appreciate that. Good luck. To, good luck to you, sir. So let me take another caller. This is Shapra. You're live in here. Hello. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we before I um we're not going to take more callers. Probably after that, I have Amit. But I wanted to play something today on on debt settlement. Something I recorded yesterday on our YouTube channel. But I would like you to listen to it. It's very interesting. It's very important. So I'll have Franco play that. And anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. If you have any questions, give us a call five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. Please listen to that and. and uh, i'll be back after those messages hey this is attorney sharp rally for another episode on the legal issues and today we're going to talk about different topic uh, than the immigration topic that we all usually discuss about and these are situation that affect both immigrants and non-immigrants in the United States and it is the topic of debts as you know a lot of people find themselves into debts that they cannot pay uh, either to credit cards or mortgage on their houses uh, uh car loans you name it and unfortunately the way the system works uh if you find yourself in a debt and you cannot get out of it usually one of the options people look at is bankruptcy but there is an alternative to bankruptcy and that's called debt settlement a debt settlement in simple terms means basically settling your debt um uh, to a fraction of its value for example you owe $100,000 we might be able to settle it settle it for $20,000 and then uh, the rest you get forgiven that's just a quick example and as you know a debt settlement is um can take for can take different forms for example you have credit card debts uh you can have second mortgages like i mentioned but also one of the other aspect that most people don't know about is you can get debts without even incurring debts for example uh you are in a litigation for anything you you name it uh, litigation for a slip and fall an injury or something like that and they get a judgment against you or it is going on in a litigation well the first line of defense when you go into litigation is to hire a litigation lawyer to defend you the problem is that often times you end up by paying the defense more than you would have actually paid the the company who's suing you 
So one solution is actually to settle uh, those debts, whether they are before the litigation or after the litigation, and we call it pre pre-trial or pre-litigation settlements. And uh, you can get out of it and uh, with less headaches than a litigation. Now, if the case goes into litigation and you have not defended yourself properly or you have defended yourself, even you lost, they get what we call a judgment against you. A judgment will cause a lot of problems on your case because one, they can pretty much uh, put their hands in your pocket at this point. One thing they can do, they can put lien on your property. They can basically also uh, garnish your paycheck and they can pretty much enter into all the steps uh, of, uh, of, in, of what, they can, what they can do to take the money. And once they get a judgment against you, uh, you're pretty much stuck for life. Um, unless you have some kind of bankruptcy and you qualify for bankruptcy, you won't be able to get out of it and uh, without at least settling with them. So this is what, what we do. We negotiate those debts and as a law firm, we negotiate those debts specifically uh, regarding to, to with your debtor, uh, I mean, with your, and then oh, as a debtor and now uh, the creditor, we negotiate with them, either their collection agencies or another law firm. We try to come to a settlement. We have done hundreds and I would say almost more than a thousand cases and some examples are here on the testimonial as you can see. Um, and uh, and few of them, these are just few of them, but two uh, interesting cases came to play recently with us, which I want to mention today, uh, which is going to be very helpful for people to determine if they should go for a debt settlement or not. So in this case, in case one, uh, the client was in a litigation and, um, and uh, a settlement uh, was cut in this case. Um, on the court cost and uh, and um, and they came to us of course for a debt settlement and uh, the client was being sued originally for sixty thousand dollars right so they got a settlement actually for all uh, we settled it for only thirty thousand dollars what happened in this case he decided to hire an attorney first in the first place that's what he did he hired an attorney and decided to pay the attorney on an, on an hourly basis to defend the case which most people will do that's a normal course of action. But at the end of the day, he lost the case. So he had to pay the attorney, of course, because when you do defense, you pay on an hourly basis. And after the judgment was final, and it took like 18 months later, he ended up, the $60,000 became $220,000. So he had a better settlement at the, the beginning for only $30,000. Had he taken that, he would have probably been better off. But then he decided to fight. And at the end, when they put all the cost on him, it came back to um, to only to $220,000, which is like not only two times, almost three and a half times more than what he was originally owing and more than six times what he could um, he had to pay on the settlement. So he came to us after that, uh, now coming back to us because he came to us originally, we got 30000 he was not satisfied, so he didn't take the deal. So now he came back to us and we we had to negotiate from the 220000 at this point because all those charges were added, including penalties, court fees, you name it. And um, he ended up by settling for $150,000. So basically, he ended up by paying $120,000 plus attorney fees uh, for a $60,000 uh, uh, amount due, and basically, which you could have settled at the beginning for $30,000. So you don't want to be in that situation. When you, you really are desperate, you go, fighting a, a debt is a good idea if you know full well that you will win. Uh, there's no guarantee of winning, of course, for any case. But at least you should have some chances of winning. If you're looking at a case where basically you know you're going to lose, you owe that money, for example, on a credit card or something you took, there's no chance of really winning. So fighting it only basically makes the lawyer rich. Uh, there's nothing wrong in that. We are lawyers too. But the truth is that you, you might end up by paying more even after that for settlement. So why not cut to the chase? Come to us. Let us help you. Uh, handles uh, such a case and I will give you another case too uh, 
another client came to us. He was being sued by the bank for uh, on, on a vehicle which actually was destroyed, and um, and they were suing him for a principal of sixty thousand. And um, he was into a, a full litigation because he was being sued on it. And at this point, the amount became ninety-seven thousand, unfortunately, and uh, including the court fees, etc. And um, by the time he came to us, actually, it became actually hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Sorry for that. It was ninety-seven. Um, then they added more penalties and interest. It became hundred and twenty-seven thousand. So he came to us and we successfully negotiated that and we brought it back to the 60,000. Actually, had it come, come to us before the litigation, we could have maybe gotten him less than that, but so far it's still a better deal rather than having nothing. Plus, there might have been possible charges down the road, criminal charges and things like that. So we don't do criminal law, but we do death settlement. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, just because I give you those uh, those cases doesn't mean uh, we will be able to get you the same deals, because each case differ, and uh, each cases uh, cases uh, differ, cases differ, and uh, success in one doesn't mean we're going to be successful in another. However, having seen our record, and you can check our website, which is on the screen, yourdebtsettlementattorney.com, or call us at the number five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. We might be able to help. We can settle your debt. And the good news is that we won't charge you any upfront fees until we get a deal. So try your, your chance with us uh, before you try it other, other places. And if you're in California, call us 510-742-5887. Uh, just to let you know, everything I, anything I told you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided you should contact an attorney uh, if you have any questions and the website to check your debt settlement attorney.com and the phone number to call 510-742-5887 we recommend that you you go ahead and you check on your on your case before you make a, a different proposition by by the court so thank you so much ladies and gentlemen we'll be back Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Thank you, Franco, for playing this um, this audio. And this was uh, basically a message from us for some examples of debt settlement because I get a lot of calls, people asking me to explain uh, how it works. Um, but this one was mostly for people who are in litigation and who are getting sued. And I will have hopefully Amit coming in a few minutes uh, talking a little bit more about, about debt settlement and, uh, and real estate in a few minutes. Uh, in Punjabi, but until then, I don't know, Franco, if we have any caller. Let me take a couple of more callers. This is Shapra. You're live on air. Hello? Hello. So, ladies and gentlemen, yes, I said we are not going to take more callers. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we were talking, of course, about in the beginning, uh, we talk about debt settlement. Now, I'm going to talk back to my immigration part. A lot of things happening, and I would like you to do me a favor. Please sign up on our YouTube channel. I have two YouTube channels, by the way, but there's one which I'm dedicated to small, small videos where I'm giving you tips. And especially the H-1B is opening, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, H-1B is opening in the next few, is on April 1st. But then those cases are taking time and consuming time to, to process. And we are getting a lot of them. So if you need help, you're a company or you're an individual, you want to file an H-1B, we'll give you a good deal. Give us a call at the office, 510-742-5887. I have filed H-1B now for since I became a lawyer. So it's above 11 years, and uh, we have been very, very successful in H-1B. And as you can see, our knowledge of, of, uh, of the immigration law is very extensive. And uh, not only we know the trade, we know the tricks of the trade. That's, uh, that's what makes the difference. And many people tend to just go with, uh, with, uh, with some cheap non-lawyer who will not really give you a good service. Not only that, and many of them are under investigation, and then once you, they investigate whoever is preparing those paperwork for you, your case will also be under investigation. So be careful on that. Uh, and I know there are very good lawyers here in the Bay Area. You should contact them and contact us if you need help. Uh, don't go to a non-lawyer to do your H-1B. It might be a little bit cheaper, uh, at the end of the day, it might cost you more. And also, a lot of people will try to do it online. There's nothing wrong in that. But the truth is that many of them will not give that, give you that service. 
with us, you will have a personal service. We might not be perfect. We might not be big. But one thing you, you're sure is that when you're talking to my team or myself, you're talking to people who know, uh, you know who you're talking to. And that's why more and more I get consultations from people who are, um, and uh, let me take one quarter, but that's why we get many consultations as a second opinion from big companies. Let me take one more quarter and then I'll take a meet. This is Shah Prari, you're live in here. Mr. Shah, thanks for taking call. Yes, my call. you're welcome, sir. So, uh, yeah. So I have one small question, like I have a stamping uh, which is valid till March 17, but I uh, applied for a new H1 extension to the, and it came actually. So can I travel to India with the old stamping which is still valid, but the, with the new H1B papers? Yes. The, the stamping is not attached to a company. As long as your transfer was done properly and you have a letter of employment, you can give at the airport, you can travel on the same stamp. What, till when the stamp is valid? Okay, it is valid actually. So I'll be coming back like uh, a week before it expires. So, okay. but I'll carry all the new H1B, and it's also with the same company, so it should not be a problem, right? You should not have any problem. And if you're kind of doubtful, just give me a call. Let me look at it, and we'll do a consultation. But actually, what you just told me, you're safe. Make sure okay. you're carrying two things with you at the airport. One, a, a current letter of employment. A simple letter basically con uh, confirming your, your position at the company. And also if you can carry a copy of the petitioner's letter uh, with you, the support letter. And also make sure that if, they, if it is a small company that you have a phone number which the officer at the airport can use to pretty much kind of um, guide you on the, on the case, okay? Uh, I can okay. call if in case they, they, they have to get more information, okay? Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Shah. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have Amit on the line. But before I move to Amit, um, I would like to cover some of the issues I was talking about under the H-1B. H-1B right now is becoming very, very difficult. And we are going to file a lot of them. And uh, the reasons people are coming to us is because they have this, this service. Of course, like I said, nobody is perfect now when it comes to H-1B. We are seeing a lot of issues on specialty occupations. We are seeing a lot of issues when it comes to to um, how it is filed. And uh, make sure, yesterday I made a, a, a video on uh, on startups. Uh, many people ask me the question, I'm a small startup, can I file H-1B? The answer is pretty much yes. But you have this video, and this video is on the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com, Shapirali Law, S-H-A-H-P-E-E-R-A, L L Y L A W Shaprai Law, the YouTube channel I have, and um, hopefully also if you need any help when it comes to H1B, we're going to get very busy. We're already getting busy right now. In the next, uh, we are starting to to do the LCAs, etc., on the cases. So I will recommend that you call us early to get help. And the number to call is five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven five one zero seven eight seven four two five eight eight seven. And uh, again, as I was mentioning earlier, things are going to change really quickly. One, we have the election year. Two, we have this Justice Scalia, who is no longer uh, there. Things are going to change on the Supreme Court, so be ready for that. And you need good lawyers on your side. And um, just to let people who are new to our show, uh, here we have been rated among the top lawyers. Top lawyers on EVO, super lawyers, um, uh, rising star. I have been uh, awarded numerous awards, uh, and including also, uh, we have helped a lot of people, including, as you know, the H4 EAD was uh, one of our propositions with the help of a, of a great group uh, from from Rashi, and we, we did it. it, it did happen, and we, ha we started the petition, all the stuff. So we want you, now we have another petition. If you go online, type reduce EB2, if you type it on Google, it will pop up on, on change.org. Please sign this. We are trying to push the government to change also, the, to reduce the EB2 time. And also, just to let you know, uh, we have this situation on, on EB2 that is unbearable for many, and we need your support. For those who have made it, please sign the petition. Even those who have not made it, please sign the petition. Reduce EB2. Hopefully, we'll, they will hear us. And um, we will also be able to, to kind of 
push things in a way that um, that it will work. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have all those petitions and all those things going on. Please uh, check it for us and uh, also make sure that you have a system where uh, where basically we, we keep democracy alive in this country. And for those who are eligible to vote, please register to vote. And for the young people listening, I'm, I'm going to advise you to vote because this is going to be big. Uh, it's going to make a difference between life and death for many uh, depending who wins the election. So I will recommend that you vote. Hopefully in California we won't have this problem, but I know people around the country who are listening to me, I know people listening in other states, please register to vote. I repeat that, please register to vote. It's very important that we show that the immigrant community are responsible and we will vote in a democratic government, a government that will be fair to everybody, not only to one group. So it's very important to register to vote. And I encourage people, young people, to get involved and go and register people to vote. So um, before I leave, I'm going to check. Amit, are you there? I'm here. Yes. Hi, Amit. How are you? Sorry. Good. Good. How are you, sir? Yes. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will be back on Monday for the show from noon to one. But until then, I'll have Amit continue. And anything we say today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. Amit, you have 10 minutes to go, so I'll let you talk about a little bit in Punjabi, especially, yes. and Hindi, about debt settlement and real estate. Great. Thank you, Amit. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank sir. You, Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. to all the listeners. Hope you guys are having a great day. And uh, Anji may actually uh, uh, here to talk about uh, the real estate market that which is uh, as well. Then if you have any debt, you debt have any debt, then we can definitely help you out with all the process and everything on that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to give you information. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a Bay Area realtor. Uh, we specialize in uh, you know all kind of real estate process, whether you're looking for buying, selling, investment property, you want to uh, you know do the short sales. Uh, you want to buy HUD properties, uh, those are the government agencies' properties. Uh, we specialize in that. <clears throat> then our office also actually do a lot of uh, loans, and uh, uh, plus we also take care of the property management uh, as well. On top of that, I got to see uh, investor, if you're an investor, uh, you're looking for the portfolio properties, you have cash in your hands. Uh, we do actually buy the properties uh, from auction, uh, from the county step, and then you know we can rehab it for you with our construction team, so they can go ahead and definitely get you the best price possible in the market uh, by uh, remodeling it. And you can you know either hold it or you want to flip it. We can definitely make you some good amount of money based on that. And uh, <clears throat> on top of that, you know we don't uh, uh, charge uh, a lot of money uh, to our clients on the commission base uh, because our main uh, focus is on to uh, keep you for the long term uh, you know Taki I mean you can stay with us for the for uh, long term and then uh, you know save money from us uh, based on that one because we do everything in-house whether it has to do with the loans whether it has to do with the uh, with the property management and all the stuff in real estate the other uh, about which you can contact me number is five one zero two nine 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 three six one uh, my website is www.gambiramit.com and uh, you know you can uh, visit my office we are located in fremont central located very close to central avenue in thornton it's uh, very centrally located and we open from monday through saturday from uh <clears throat> 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and uh, Sundays by appointments only. So number again is 510-299-9361. As well as the market hagi market is very very hot. The uh, news are here that you know the uh, real estate industry hagi it is still on the positive side uh, side because the main reason is that the interest rates hagi as well as they are very, very, very low compared to, uh, you know, last year because a lot of people are refinancing right now. And, uh, you know, they have already uh, got the mortgage applications at 8.2% or higher right now already within two months. So you can see, you know, a lot of people are taking advantage. Data rate as well, again, is, I think it is around 4% and under right now. So if you are planning to buy a house, affordability, it is very good. You know, because your DTI, debt to income ratio, you can definitely qualify based on the interest rate if you're planning to buy the house. So if you are looking to get a pre-approval as well, you can definitely contact me. I can get you guys connected to my loan department. And then we can, you know, we have good connections with other uh, agents in the market because
because we have been here for almost 20 years in this location, uh, you know, in Fremont. So we have been uh, providing houses uh, to I mean, a lot of our clients, and uh, we definitely can help you getting your dream come true. And uh, recently, actually, past couple of weeks, uh, you know, we have actually gotten the houses in one uh, offer, got it accepted, you know, for our clients because we know what the seller is actually uh, looking for in order to uh, write the offer how to get it accepted and what the what the agents are looking for so that way we can we can work it out with you and get it done for you on that one so you are looking for that you know kind of a, a service and plus you don't want to you know linger your hopes on the house because the main reason is when you are ready to buy the house jada bhi tusi ready hunde hai gyo that's the that's the time you want to you know hit the bull's eyes and you know make it work and you need somebody expert who knows uh, you know uh, what what uh, the sellers want and what numbers to work it out and how to write the offers because that's the main reason uh, to work it out and uh, you know get the house you're looking for the dream house so again the number to contact me for that is if you are planning to you know buy the house right now since the market has been really good uh, this is the perfect time number is 5102999361 on the other hand agar to seller hai gaya seller waste bhi vadiya opportunity hai gaya because since there are a lot of buyers uh, buying the property and on top of that rates are pretty good and you know uh, market de vich hale any uh, you know inventory bhi nahi hai gaya isle so if you want to expose your property more to the people and you want to save money on the commission definitely we can work it out we actually work with different options we can give you different packages uh, if you want to get the discounted commission or you want to pay the full commission it's totally upon you if you wanted to get more exposure then definitely you know we will create a different packet for you and different packet for the discounted price on top of that agar tumhare kol koi bhi property hai gear rental property hai gear you want to sell the property as is without doing anything you have tenants in there any problem we have investors in house who are looking to buy the property all cash and they can close up the, uh, the deal in 3 days for you so once again if you have any property anywhere in the california that you are looking to sell it and you're having a trouble with the tenants or something is uh, you know there's a, a, a problem with the property we have investors jade you know they can buy cash they can close the deal in 3 working days for you they have cash ready to go they will give you the price that they think the property is worth and for that as well you can contact me number is 5102999361 or you can visit my website as www.gambheeramit.com sade kol kuch listing as well available hai gaya ne agar tusi you know makan khareedne waste sochde pay hai gyo we have a listing in elk grove uh, this one actually can be a good investment property three bedroom two bath 2003 built in uh, 8 out of 10 school district the list price is $335,000 only on this one uh then we have a listing in uh, mountain house which is a four bedroom three bath 3100 living area and 6500 lot size 2004 built uh this one actually is listed for 575 uh then we have a townhouse in union city which is a four bedroom three bath hoa is only $230 a month and this one is listed for 475 475000 so and we have some pocket listings as well coming up uh, three listings in hayward uh, one listing in newark close to the, uh, the the new theater new park mall so some excellent properties excellent pricing perfect timing give us a call number is 5102999361 on top of that agar tumhare kol koi bhi debt wagaira hai ga you want to you know save money you are in a trouble right now yeah you know you have any liens or you have any uh, you know tax liens or any mortgage liens uh, you know um, other than the second loans and all the stuff otherwise the shaprali team is there to help you out as well for their number is 510742 587 and our team definitely works hard for you to make sure ki aise thode paise bachaiye and make sure we can get the job done for you you know so that way and the other thing is we like to give honest advice and honest opinion to our clients to make sure that you know uh they they are getting the right uh, the right service and you are saving money plus the work is getting done from your standpoint so give us a call for the real estate needs like i said there is no money charge up front agar tusi paise bachane hai gale give us a call number is 5102999361 shaprali the team dena agar tusi settlement karni hai ki kisi bhi credit card debt wagaira waste ona da number hai ga 5107425887 and our office is located in freeman and their office is located in new york so that's all i have for today and again if you want to save money Uh, we have investors in house and definitely we can help you out uh, you know they can buy the property cash with within 3 days for you 
So call us and uh, we'll be waiting to talk to you and we'll be back next week. Thank you. Enjoy. Are you an H-1B visa holder? Do you have an I-140 petition approved or have an extension under AC-21 provisions? Are you on H-4 visa? If yes, we've got amazing news for you. As of May 26, 2015, you or your spouse on H-4 visa might be eligible for a work permit, aka EAD. And to apply, you need a lawyer who knows about H-4 visa issues. Lawyer Shah Parali has been at the forefront of this fight for H-4 rights and has actually helped make this dream a reality. Now, his firm is ready to help you or your spouse get their EADs. Call 510-742-5887 or visit www.splgpc.com to apply for your EAD. This is an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad.